in the previous lecture <clears throat> we saw that uh, even some fairly simple looking binary or digital operations can have pretty complex underlying circuits in particular we looked at some simple circuits like the half adder and full adder and we saw that let us say if a calculator or a computer has to uh, do the operation of adding to 4 bit binary numbers we can have as many as you know 20 plus gates so therefore uh, what was a very simple looking operation by hand has suddenly become a headache in terms of circuits or the underlying hardware so therefore we sort of ended that earlier lecture by saying that as we try to aim for more and more complex operations our capability to handle the complexity must also increase we cannot simply say that i will design you know a big complex circuit by just using universal gates as a starting point well it's not impossible it's definitely possible but then the level of complexity your own hard work and the, the you know the load on you would be very 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 high so therefore rather than using gates as a as a basic element can we define something a little bit more complex which is definitely made up of gates but then we don't have to use that many of those complex elements to realize circuits which are little more complex my point is that those elements could be something like a black box whose operation we know but all the time it is not mandatory for the user to know exactly what is inside that black box as long as we know what kind of operation it is doing ultimately as digital designers we will have to find out what is inside those boxes because unless we as engineers know what is inside those black boxes we cannot truly use them to the best of our abilities so with this let us move over to this new topic of discussion that is called as msi circuits where msi stands for medium scale integration so the logic gates so to speak are called ssi that is called as small scale integration that means they contain very few number of gates medium scale integration consists of well sorry logic gates are called small scale integration ssi because they contain very few number of transistors inside but medium scale integrated circuits they contain more number of gates so therefore they contain more number of transistors and you can also have things like large scale integration where you can have thousands and thousands of transistors or gates but that discussion is rather beyond the scope of this course but we will try to limit ourselves to msi circuits and at least try to handle those kind of problems which deserve this kind of circuits so for a few moments let us forget about logic gates as we know it we cannot totally forget it we will come back to it but for the time being just for the sake of simplicity let us let us not bother too much about the logic gates and instead look at the first type of msi circuit which we are going to be using and that is called as a multiplexer now when you hear the word multiplex when you hear the word multiplex what comes into your mind the word multiplex refers generally in our daily life to something like a mall 
where you have let us say multiple things under a single roof so if i go to a mall or a multiplex what what people call i i can find um, a movie theater i could find uh, restaurants i could find uh, coffee shops i could find um, uh, clothing shops dress shops so on and so forth so if uh, let us say i go to a mall or a multiplex uh, when i have some free time in hand and then i go to that mall and i see that okay we have you know one or two dress shops on the ground floor over on this side on the other side i can see there is a very nice coffee shop beside that i can see a very nice italian restaurant next to that i can see a very nice uh, uh, good looking uh, you know tandoori corner and on the floor above i can see that there's a theater also where a good movie is running so therefore depending on my mood i can choose to go into any one of those so the point is that i have multiple options i have multiple options and based on my mood and what i want i can go to any one of those places so even a multiplexer is a block which works like that now let us take a look at what a multiplexer is so the symbol for a multiplexer is this it kind of looks like a trapezium now multiplexer has something called as data inputs multiplexer has something called as a data inputs now those data inputs the number of data inputs can only be a power of 2 so therefore let us say there are four data inputs let's call them as d0 d1 d2 and d3 they are called as data inputs now each of them are binary values okay that is either 0 or 1 but as you can see the number of data inputs should always be a power of 2 and there is one output called y so think of the data inputs as the shops in the mall these shops are there you can choose any one of those now how do you choose one out of four well the multiplexer has two additional inputs which are called as select inputs so let's call them as a and b now why did i put two select inputs because 2 raised to 2 is 4 so if the number of data inputs is equal to n then the number of select inputs let us say that is small n that means capital n will be equal to 2 raised to n to rest a small n so it's like saying if i write a truth table where the inputs are a and b and the output is y so a very simple two input truth table would look like this now based on what the y is as a function of a and b this column could have zeros ones in any number so therefore suppose i don't know what y is so therefore let us call them as d0 d1 d2 and d3 which is nothing but the data inputs all right so d0 could be 0 or 1 d1 could be 0 or 1 d2 could be 0 or 1 d3 could be 0 or 1 but suppose a and b are both zeros the select inputs then y will be equal to d0 it's kind of like a switch the y line will get connected to the d0 line similarly if a is 1 b is 0 then in that case y will be connected to the d2 line because d2 is here likewise if a is 0 b is 
y will get connected to the d1 line and if a is 1, b is 1, y will get connected to the d3 line. So therefore, a multiplexer is kind of like a literal implementation of a truth table. So whatever is a truth table, the outputs are available to you. Okay, the outputs are available, zeros, ones, whatever. You can choose any one out of those based on the values of A and D. So therefore, if you want to correlate this discussion with that of a multiplex, D0, D1, D2, D3 are the shops or the facilities inside the multiplex and you can choose any one out of those. Whereas the select inputs A and D are your mood or requirement. So as per the required values of A and D, any one out of these four would be chosen. Alright? So, let us take an example and see how this works. Let's suppose I have I have a logic function which looks like this. Now suppose uh, y could be just about anything. Let, let's say it's 1, 0, 0 and 1. Alright. So therefore, if I were to show the multiplexer, it would look like this. There would be two select inputs A and B. Now I would label D0, D1, D2 and D3. So therefore, this corresponding to 0, 0 would be D0. So essentially, you can see that the row number is what I am calling as the data input number. This will be D1, this will be D2, this will be D3. So therefore, if I were to assign some voltages over here, so D0 would be let us say logic 1 or that is 5 volts. D1 is 0, that would be like a ground. D2 would also be like a ground and D3 would be 1 or a 5 volt and you have the output Y. So therefore, if A is 1 and D is 1, then Y will get snapped to D3 which means Y will be equal to 1 which is what we want. Alright, so this multiplexer where you have 4 data inputs and 1 output is called as a 4 is to 1 multiplexer. So always we say number of data inputs to output. So you can have multiplexers like 4 is to 1, 8 is to 1, 16 is to 1 and so on. Because the number of data inputs is power of 2. You can have this kind of multiplexers. Now, in short, multiplexer is also called as MUX. It is called as a MUX. Alright. So, this is a basic understanding of a multiplexer which helps you implement A literal version of a truth table. Alright? So, this is a very handy tool. This is a very handy tool which kind of works like a switch, a controlled switch. Now we have to ask ourselves. Now we have to ask ourselves how can we design a four is to one max using logic gates. Now remember that although we have defined this multiplexer the way it works, we cannot just hope to define things arbitrarily. We have to ensure that they are indeed possible. Okay, 
they are indeed possible that we have to ensure. So therefore my question is that whatever be d0, d1, d2, d3, can I design a circuit using logic gates such that based on the values of a and b, y could take any one out of the four values of d0, d1, d2, d3. Let us try to investigate that. So let us see how we can make a 4 is to 1 mux using logic gates. So therefore let us say a generalized 2 input truth table which looks like this. Right. So, over here, let us say y can take any value which is d0, d1, d2 or d3 corresponding to what is the values of a and b. Now, let us redefine this problem to something that we already know and that is, can we make this mux using NAND gates. Can we use NAND gates? Well, NAND is something we are familiar with because it is a universal gate. We have seen how we can implement logic functions using k-maps and realize them in the SOP form using NAND gates. We can do that. So the question is, can we apply that same knowledge to designing a 4 is to 1 mux. Okay. So therefore, can we write the min terms corresponding to each of these rows? Now you may question, what do I mean by min terms? Right now we do not know which out of these 4 is 0 and which out of these four is one. Our conventional definition of min terms is that the output should be one, that is a min term. But is that all there is? Is that all there is? Suppose I give you a function which looks like this. And therefore, it is something like this. So, normally we say that these two are the min terms. And we generally ignore these two. We generally ignore these two, which are not ones. But, can we do something? where we say essentially that, um, well, I do not know what is the value of d0, d1, d2 and d3, but, but if they are 1, then it should be a min term, if they are 0, then the min term should not happen. So normally when we write the min term corresponding to this row, we say it is a bar dot b bar. And for this term, it is a dot b. Now, this is like saying, when I'm looking for the one, I am also kind of multiplying the output to this. So it's like saying a dot b dot one. This, sorry, a bar dot b bar dot one. This is like saying it is a bar a dot b dot 1. The meaning does not change. 
had this second row been a min term, it would have been a bar dot b, but it is not a min term because the output is a zero. So therefore, it is a bar dot b dot zero. Ultimately, this will nullify. Likewise, this will be a dot b bar dot zero. This will also nullify because it is not a min term. What is left behind is this one and this one. So therefore, can I apply this general logic over here? Suppose I don't know what d zero is, and I want to treat this like a possible min term. So therefore, I will say it is a bar dot b bar dot d zero. Very much like what I am doing over here. I am essentially using the y value as another term to make a product with the two input variables. So for zero one, I can write a bar dot b dot d one because the output over here is d one. Likewise, I can say a dot b bar dot d two, and this will be a dot b dot d three. So if I were to now write the SOP form over here, this would be a bar dot b bar dot one plus a bar dot b dot zero, which would essentially cancel. Plus a dot b bar dot zero again. This will cancel. Plus a dot b dot one, which is ultimately what we want. So therefore, using these general min terms, I can say that y is equal to a bar b bar d zero plus a bar b d one plus a b bar d two plus a b d three. This is what our y will now look like in general. So, depending on whether d zero, d one, d two, d three is one or zero, the terms will either stay or vanish. So, let us say if d zero is zero, then this entire term will vanish. It will no longer be a mid term. Okay. So, therefore, we now have this thing which looks kind of like a SOP. It is indeed an SOP, except that. It is now also a function of the output variables or the output values. Okay, so therefore, let us try to realize them using NAND gates. Let us rewrite the expression for y, which we just got: a bar b bar d zero plus a bar B D one plus A B bar D two plus A B D three. So let us say I am showing my inputs, the data inputs this way. D zero, D one, D two, and D three. And on this side, I am giving my inputs A and B. Now let us say I have two NOT gates to generate the complements. Right. So this is A, this is A bar, this is B, this is B bar. So the first term will correspond to a NAND gate. So it will be one term will be d zero, the other two terms will be a bar and b bar. This is the first term. The second term will be one more NAND gate. One of the inputs will be d one. The other input will be a bar, and the other will be b. Third one is the third NAND gate. One of the inputs will be d two. Then the other input will be a. 
b bar. This is not where I am putting the dots. That means this is a connection. And over here, the fourth term will correspond to a fourth NAND gate. One of the inputs will be D3. The other two will be B and A. That's it. So we will need, as you can see, four individual NAND gates for each of the terms and a final NAND gate to combine all these. This will be y. So therefore, what was looking like a trapezium earlier on, now looks like this. So the inside diagram of a 4 is to 1 mux sort of looks like this. The four data inputs, the two select inputs a and b and one output y. Alright, so let us see how this works. Suppose A and B are 0 and 0. A and B are 0 and 0. That means what will happen? If A and B are 0 and 0, then We expect that D0 will be selected. Let us now see what is the input for every gate. So if A and B are 0 and 0, the inputs for these two will be 1 and 1 because they are A bar and B bar. The input for this gate will be 1 and this gate will be 0. The input for this gate what will be a1 sorry a will be now 0 and b is 1 and the last nand gate it will be 0 and 0 so the rule of nand gate is that the moment one of the inputs is 0 the output would become 1 so in these three cases the output would become 1 but the first NAND gate, the topmost NAND gate is getting two inputs as 1 and 1, then what will be the output? It is like saying D0 will be multiplied with 1 and 1 and NANDed, which means this output will be D0 bar. So therefore, for this second stage NAND gate, one arm gives me D0 bar, the other three arms give me all 1s. So therefore, it is like saying D0 bar is multiplied with all the ones and then NANDed. So therefore the output is D0 bar dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 whole bar that is nothing but D0. This is how the multiplexer is working. Let us take one more case when A is 1 and B is 0. Then in that case here A bar will now become 0. B bar will still be 1. Here we will get both zeros. Here we will get A is 1 and B is 1. Here we will get A is 1 and B is 0. So therefore, the moment this NAND gets is a 0, the output will be 1. This will again be 1. This will also be 1 because this is seeing a 0. Here what we are seeing is there are two ones. So therefore this output will now be D2 bar. So then this is like saying D2 bar is again getting a product with these three ones. So the output will be the D2 bar bar which is nothing but D2. And that is what we want because 1 0 means it is D2 should be 
the output. So this is how using two NOT gates and five NAND gates, we are able to make a four is to one MUX. We are able to make a four is to one MUX. So therefore, this is the way with which we can design a MUX using NAND gates and obviously NOT gates. And to some extent, we could use this to realize a truth table in its actual form. So you can give the inputs over here and the corresponding outputs you can give over here. The output values and the final output will be chosen between any of these values which are nothing but the truth table entries. Alright. So, so, as I was mentioning earlier, as I was mentioning earlier, the MUX or the multiplexer has a number of data inputs and those data inputs, the number of data inputs should always be a power of 2. So one of the smallest muxes you can come across is a 4 is to 1 mux. The smallest obviously will be a 2 is to 1 which corresponds to only one select input. So let us take a look at the smallest mux. Two is to one. So therefore that means how many inputs are there? Two data inputs and one select input. So therefore A and Y, A could be 0 or 1, Y could be D0 or D1. So therefore again using the same min term logic, we can write this as A bar dot D0, this is A D1. So therefore Y will be A bar D0 plus A D1. So Therefore, in, in a very simple sense, you can show that this is D0, D1 and the MUX will look like this. One NAND gate over here, the other NAND gate will be over here. And the final NAND gate to combine these two. So, two data inputs, one select input, and this gives me my trapezium. This is why. This is what a 2 is to 1 MUX looks like. So, as our complexity increases, that means we have logic functions with more and more number of variables. We will need bigger and bigger muxes. So, for one variable functions, we need a 2 is to 1 mux. For two variable functions, we need a 4 is to 1 mux. For three variable logic functions, we will need 2 raised to 3, that is a 8 is to 1 mux. And for four variable inputs, which is the maximum we have seen in our discussions, we will need a 16 is to 1 MUX. So 8 and 16 is to 1 MUXs, they look very complex, but the principle is one and the same, which is why I decided to start with something that is intermediate, like a 4 is to 1 MUX, which we can understand. So therefore, let us take a look at an 8 is to 1 MUX. So 
8 is to 1 marks means 8 data inputs and 3 select inputs. So select inputs means my truth table will now have 3 variables and 1 y. Please note that we are designing the MUX or whatever MUX we are looking at should be able to implement any logic function. That is why we are not filling the Y column with specific ones or zeros, but rather we are calling them as data bits. They could be one, they could be zero, hardly matters, but it should be able to implement any logic function. So therefore we'll call this as D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. Okay. So, so, in terms of our black box, we will see something like this. And the select inputs would be here. So, suppose, suppose we look at this truth table and decide, let us say that y is the carry out of a full adder. Then we can give some values to d0, d1 till d7. So the carry bit over here will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So if I were to implement this using the max, then I would give ground over here, ground over here, ground over here, but 1 over here. Then again ground over here and 1 to each of these. This is how you can use an 8 is to 1 mux to realize a logic function of your choice in this case which is the carry out output of a full adder. Please remember that a multiplexer or the MUX is designed to implement any logic function using that many variables, that many select input variables. The inside of the MUX is designed in a very general fashion through which whatever be the values of, you know, these data values from D0 to D7 or whatever, or D0 to D3 or whatever, whatever be the values this will be able to work in its principle. And what is the principle? Depending upon the values of A, B and C, any one out of these eight will be selected. So let us say if A, B and C is 0, 1, 1, then D3 will be selected to Y. If A, B, C are 1, 0, 1, then D5 will be coupled to Y. If A, B, C is 1, 1, 0, then D6 will be coupled to Y. This is the way. The value of these data inputs from the purview of the MUX, from the perspective of the MUX, the inside of the MUX is not important. For a user, yes, the user has to give the different logic values outside. And then it will work as per the specific function of his choice. But, but the design 
of the MUX, the circuit inside the MUX has to be a very, very, very generic circuit. Okay. Which can be implemented using NAND gates, how we saw. And this is going to be a very, very useful block in our discussion in the course. So we shall continue our discussion from this point onwards in the next lecture. Thank you.